I'm back. I told you I'd be back. Yeah, I'm, I'm making this video right after uh, the Doylestown uh, uh, visit with uh, Patrick. Um, but I wanted to put this one in a separate video because it doesn't really uh, tie into that last video. Um, but here it is. I'm going to try to make this short, but I recently upgraded a book I showed earlier in the year. You know, I had a lower grade copy, and I don't mind low grade copies, as you know. But an opportunity presented itself where I can get a, where I was able to purchase a higher grade copy of this book. And I was saying to myself, well, geez, you know, this is definitely a book I would love to have in a high grade because of its importance to me. Now, I know for me to ask you, do you know what this book is, it would be impossible for you to know. So I will show it to you. But for those of you that watch my videos and you know the significance of this book, you would know why I wouldn't mind having a higher grade copy of it. I wasn't necessarily looking for one, you know. I was happy with the low grade copy I had. I think I had a 3.0. Uh, maybe, you know, on a bad day it would have been a 2.5, but I think I accurately graded that one. And that's what the grader, when, you know, when I bought the book from the person, that's what he said it was, and I believed him. So, you know, he's pretty accurate with his grading. But when this book, when the opportunity came to pick up this book in a higher grade, I said, hell yeah. Hell yeah, as ETA Nick would sometimes say. Okay, so you can see from the back it's kind of old, and it is old. Came out in the 50s. Oh, and it smells good too. Ta da! <laughs> you know, I usually don't show my books like this out of the Mylar, but I just had to. I'm going to show you an inside look at this book, at the cover and in the interior, so that I can share with you. The things that ETA Nick, Dr. Von Chilla, Batcave Comics 83, and so many others that I'm not mentioning that I'm simply forgetting, that they often show in their videos, the inside look. I'm not gonna I, I might do this again in the future, but this is definitely a book that I have to show you the interior and uh, show you why I love it so much. But take a look at this. I'll show a little bit more like this before I switch views. It has pencil mark over here on the F, but I don't give a shit. This book is, I think, personally, some of you may disagree, but when you take, a, when I show you a closer look at it, I think it's a 7.0. It does have a few creases, uh, spine breaking creases on the, oh, not spine, a color breaking creases on the spine, but not too bad. But it has sharp corners, no tears. Uh, it's complete. The centerfold's firmly attached. The cover's firmly attached. There's no rust on the staples. It has a little uh, stain over here, though. I don't know what the hell this is. Yeah, but I think it's a 7.0. I could be wrong, but I think it is. Absolute terror on that man's face. And he should be terrified because he was a dickhead. All right, let's take an inside look at the book. Okay, here we go. Let's get a good look at this book, the cover before we get to the interior. Things seem a little shaky because I'm using a phone. You might hear a little reaper in the background fussing about something, but that's normal in this house. Yeah, I don't know what that is right there. I think it's a sharp corner. Look at that. And there's the pencil, the pencil mark. I don't know if that could be removed, but you know, it doesn't bother me one bit. Let's get a look at this other corner as we pan down. You see some more of Graham Ingalls awesome artwork. Oof. Look at that guy. Ghastly. Another nice corner that is not a crease. That is just the artwork. Let's zoom out a little. Yeah, there's a little, I don't know what that stuff is. My God. Yeah, that guy's teeth. 
This corner is the weakest, I think, of the four. Yeah, that's okay. Here we get a nice close up of the spine. There, that's that's a nasty that's a nasty color break right there. But so far, not bad. I still think it's a 7.0. Like I said, the grading is subjective. There's another nasty uh, color break. Grading is certainly subjective, but I think I graded this one fairly accurate. There's a few creases there that could probably be pressed out. They're not color breaking, or at least I don't think they are. All right. Let's take a look inside. I'll try to go through this fast. We're not going to read the stories together. But the first a story in this book is the cover story. It's called Poetic Justice. Uh, artist, of this, artist of the issue, Al Feldstein. Great artist. Al Feldstein was born in Brooklyn on October 24th, 1925. Like the way they're shouting it at us. Yeah, this looks like some print issues right here. You know, yeah. Poetic justice. Yeah, yep. Yeah. This this story right here was in the Tales from the Crypt movie from 1972 that came out, that was made in England, and it was the third story in. And there are the two guys on the front cover, the older guy and the younger guy without his uh, top hat. I'm going to try to go through this quickly. But this is Graham Ingalls at his best, the way he draws. He has a very distinctive style. You'll always be able to, I mean, you could tell, obviously, artist styles uh, from book to book. But Graham Ingalls has that very distinctive, you know, way he draws. The faces always seem narrow and... The people always have uh, arched eyebrows. I mean, they're so nasty looking. <laughs> Look at these guys. These two douchebags. They send the old guy these bags. Because they want the idea is these guys, they want this older man to sell out his house. I guess they're, because uh, they want their, uh, their property. They're afraid their property loses its value because his house is really, you know, ugly on the outside. And their house is really nice. So they wanted to try to get him to buy out. He wouldn't buy out. And then they do all these horrible things to him to try to get him to buy out. But he winds up killing himself. On a dead man's chest. That was on uh, the, the T Tales from the Crypt TV series. I think it was the season three or three. or I think it's actually season four. Season four uh, opener. You know how every year they would, when, they, when the show would premiere, they would show three episodes. So they show an hour and a half preview, and that was, I think, the third one, which I think started in September of 1992. So I'm just going to go through this on a dead man's chest. It was all right. You know, uh, Tales from the Crypt, the TV series, at first they started with taking, you know, pretty much doing the story uh, very closely to the comic story. Then as the seasons went on later and later, they really, it was just the, you know, they just took the title and changed a lot of things around, which is fine, but, you know, that's just the way it is. Now on sale. Shock Suspense Stories number two. Wow, look at that. The famous one is, uh, that's a little slight tear there. That was the centerfold. Do, do, do. I don't remember this story. Till death do us part. Here's a spirited horror yarn. I call it till death do, a, do we part. Not do us part. Do we part. No, that's not a printing issue. That's not the ink issue. That's the way it's drawn. <laughs> I had to say that because at first I'm looking at it. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> Hopefully uh, this phone will last. We're getting toward the end. So I'm gonna see more. What's this one? What's cooking? This was also on the Tales from the Crypt TV series. It's the one with Christopher Reeve and Judd Nelson. I think that was also season four. It was a few episodes in. 
about this struggling couple that own a restaurant and then they put something new on the menu that the customers go crazy for. Sorry, my finger was in the way. Can you guess what the new recipe was or the new food that they were serving? Yeah, well, more than chicken. Damn it, I hate it when this happens. Sometimes it's such a pain in the ass to turn a page. Am I skipping pages? I might have, I don't know. <laughs> Looks a little out of place. You hear a little reaper in the background? A little chip over there. Leopard design, oh wow. Wouldn't your house look so so wonderful with those in it? Are you, aren't you as sick and tired as I was of being skinny? No, not really. <laughs> and let's take a quick look at the back cover as I end this video. Thank you for those of you that decided to stick with me through this. Thank you for those of you that didn't. Oh well, your loss. Yeah, a little dirtier. It's a little dirtier in the back. Just quickly go through it. Yeah, that's that stain I showed you earlier. I don't know what that is. It's not a... I don't know. Can't really tell. Yeah, that's the spine. Well, everyone, thank you for watching. My This is... I'm not going to do too many of these, but I only do these with books that I, you know, really want to show you and get a nice inside look at. And this was definitely one of them. My upgraded Haunt of Fear number 12. Bye-bye.